Muhammad Irfan and Anila Mohanan, please turn on your cameras. Okay, so last class we discussed about the Green Revolution, right? Green Revolution. So we discussed about the land sealing and uh, land reforms, clear? And uh, the introduction of high yielding variety of seeds uh, to improve the agricultural production in our country by the Planning Commission, right? Yes or no? Okay, so we know that the four motto of the uh, motors of the planning commission or objectives of the planning commission or goals of the planning commission. What are they? The growth, then, then modernization, modernization, self reliance, self and equity. Okay, self reliance and uh, equity are the objectives. Okay, come on. So just open your textbook, everyone. We are here. Green revolution, green revolution. Okay, high yielding variety of seeds, high yielding variety of seeds. It was restricted to the more affluent states such as Punjab. Okay, so the use of this seed, uh, was high yielding variety of seeds, basically in the first phase, uh, uh, basically the states of Andhra Pradesh, uh, Punjab and Haryana, they used that because that states are faced a lot of problem related with the famine there. Further, the use of high yielding variety of seeds prim primarily benefited the wheat growing regions only okay so basically uh first of all the what you can say the green revolution or use of the high yielding variety of seeds basically related with uh, uh, wheat growing regions wheat growing regions in the second phase of the green revolution the high yielding variety of technologies put to large number of states in india okay clear and more variety of crops, more variety of uh, crops also introduced. So today we know that India is uh, far better than any other country in its uh, uh, food security, food uh, security, clear or not? A huge buffer stock is there with us, clear? So the plans and programs that adopted by the various governments uh, in the past, that made us, okay, in successful in uh, food security. So we studied about uh, the minimum support price and how the government is, uh, uh, purchasing this grain from the farmers and how the government is keeping uh, the grains with them. It's termed as the buffer stock. Later, how the government is distributing that to, to the people through various programs like the PDS programs, fair price shops. Okay, fair price uh, shops, uh, Anganwadis. Okay, then what you can say, midday meal program, midday meal uh, program. Okay, so food security we achieved already. So that is because of the planning. Okay. Next one, the high yielding variety of technology spread to large number of states and benefited more variety of crops. The spread of green revolution technology enabled India to achieve self-sufficiency in food grains. We no longer had to be at the mercy of America or mercy of America or any other nation for meeting our nation's food requirement. Okay, so uh, we can say that through 1970 and 1980, okay, we achieved the food security. We achieved the food security, okay, and. Uh, and no more dependence on America, okay, or any other nation for food supply. Growth in agriculture output is important, but it is not enough. It's a large proportion of the increase is, so here the statement says that, okay, growth in agriculture output is important, but it is not enough. Why it is so? Why it is so? Huh? Our agricultural production increased, but the output is not enough. Why? Why that statement? Population was growing. Definitely. Okay, it is because of the large population. Larger population. Clear. Pressure on land is every day it is increasing. Pressure on land is uh, increasing. Okay, what do you mean pressure on land? Pressure on land. Hmm? Density of population is increasing. So pressure on agriculture land also increasing. Clear or not? So we know that if you are using the traditional seeds, uh, it can give the output only two times in one year. Clear or not? Okay. If it is a high yielding variety of seeds, uh, three to four times we are able to cultivate from the same piece of land uh, and we are able to increase the production. Okay. So it is because of the high pressure on land, high pressure on land. Density of the population is increasing and the uh, growth rate of population is, it is enormous. We are unable to control that. Okay. Clear. Moving to the next page. Consumed by the farmers themselves instead of being sold in the market. Okay. Another problem, what is that? Most of the product that produced by the farmers, uh, it is consumed by them. Okay. Which means uh, subsistence farming. What do you mean subsistence farming? What do you mean subsistence farming? Subsistence farming. 
hmm? class 10 you studied all these things huh? intensive substance farming extensive substance farming commercial farming plantation remembering remembering all these words what do you mean subsistence farming there we are cultivating for our own use okay clear or not we are cultivating for our own use that's why subsistence farming okay basically primitive methods they are using there so here also using high yielding variety of seeds but the farmers use these products uh, for their own use their own use instead of being sold in the market sold in the market the higher output will not make much of a difference to the economy as a whole. Okay, so the farmers are using this product for their self-consumption. Because of that, or due to that, we can say that the high output that not made any changes in the economy as a whole. Okay, if one of the other hand, a substantial amount of agriculture produce is sold in the market by the farmers, the higher output can make a difference to the economy. So... We just think that if a farmers are able to sell all these products in the market or a major share in the market, okay, we are able to find that uh, uh, the economy will develop, right or not. Everyone will purchase the products there. Accessibility towards the food grains will be there. Okay. The higher output can make a difference in the economy. The portion of agriculture produced, which is sold in the market by the farmers is called a market surplus. What is that? Market surplus, right? The question, what do you mean with the term? Market surplus, market uh, surplus. So after our consumption, if we are a farmer, we people are farmers, just imagine. Okay, after our consumption, what left, uh, we are able to sell that in the market, clear. That is termed as market surplus, market surplus. Underline that. Just write a question, what is a market surplus? A good production of rice and wheat produced during the green revolution period, available as market surplus. surplus. What? sorry, was sold by the farmers in the market. As a result, the price of food grains declined relative to other items of consumption. Okay. So the farmers started cultivating rice and wheat uh, related with the green revolution. So they are able to sell that product in the market. So they sold that market. Sorry, sold that product in the market. Okay. And they made uh, a profit also and uh, food grains that made available to everyone. As a result, the price of food grains declined. Okay, price of the food grains like wheat and rice, it is declined, reduced uh, comparing to other items of consumption, other items, I mean, other grocery products. Okay, the low income groups who spend a large percentage of their income on food benefited from this decline in relative prices. Okay, then what happened? What happened? Hmm? So people, those with the low income, okay, low income, they are also enjoyed this benefit. Okay, this price decrease that made the poor people to purchase the grain and use it. The Green Revolution enabled the government to pro procure sufficient amount of food grains to build a stock which could be used in times of food shortage. So because of this Green Revolution, what happened? Huh? It is made possible, government, collected all these grains from the people, I mean, the farmers, and uh, created a buffer stock, a huge stock of food grains with them. And basically, they collected all these things, which could be used in times of food shortage, food uh, shortage, clear or not. So just write that question. What is that? What is Green Revolution? And what are the benefits of Green Revolution? Okay. What is Green Revolution? And what are the benefits of a Green Revolution? And one more question, I already told you that what is market surplus? Okay, and next question, what are the drawbacks of Green Revolution? So we are coming to that area. Drawbacks of Green Revolution. Drawbacks of a Green Revolution, write the question. What are the drawbacks of Green Revolution? Next paragraph is the answer for it. While the nation had immensely benefited from the Green Revolution, the technology involved was not free from risk. Okay, so because of Green Revolution, the entire economy, the entire country, the government, the poor people, everyone got the benefit. But the technology used to increase the production, it was not free from risk. Okay. A risk, risky factor was there. One such risk was the possibility that it would increase the disparities between small and big farmers. Okay, disparities, difference between big and uh, small farmers. So, who is a big farmer and who is a small farmer? How can we? 
differentiate a big farmer and a small farmer can anyone tell me hmm? a big farmer is a person who have enough money to cultivate ah. using new technologies which hmm. with or land hmm. yes and definitely it is related with the land holding land holding the size of the land that hold by that particular individual clear or not okay so this is a big farmer and small farmers means uh, their land holding it is too small and uh, always they have to borrow money to cultivate in their land in their uh, land that will create a lot of problem for them clear or not so we know that the problem of informal credit informal credit credit from the money lenders credit from the money lenders okay so big farmers and uh, small farmers existed and uh, this use of this modern technologies made a difference between the big and small farmers because only the big farmers are able to use the technology clear or not or they are able to spend more money to use this technology and the poor farmers okay they basically forced to borrow money and that created a lot of problem for them okay one such risk was the possibility that it would increase the disparities between small and big farmers since only the big farmers could afford the required inputs thereby reaping most of the benefits of the green revolution so only the big farmers uh, they utilized the technology more than the small ones and they created more profit they made more more profit moreover the high yielding variety of crops were also more prone to attack by pests and the small farmers who adopted the technology could lose everything in a pest attack clear or not okay spawn to pest means uh, it's a uh, power to resist this pest attack it is not that good clear or not it is not like traditional uh, what we can say seeds or a traditional uh, crops okay so hyv seeds is not uh, that much powerful or strong to uh, what we can say fight against the pests there so that was a problem basically the small farmers faced a lot of problem related with the pest attack okay fortunately this fear did not come true because the steps taken by the government the government provided loans at a low interest rate to small farmers and uh, subsidized fertilizers so that small farmers could also have access to the needed inputs clear so the step taken by the government to help the small farmers what is that made uh, credit available for the small farmers for a minimum interest okay or a low rate of interest okay so if the small farmers could obtain the required inputs what do you mean by inputs here inputs inputs we are discussing about agricultural production so what do you mean by input here the seeds fertilizers and technologies ah uh, definitely the seed fertilizers pesticides insecticides or what we can say the technology that what we are using okay everything is considering as inputs there right or not or the machines clear understand so to purchase all those things what the government did here government arranged credit okay loan for the farmers loan for the farmers as a result the green revolution benefited the small as well as the rich farmers okay so because of this credit availability the small farmers also benefited from the green revolution the risk of small farmers being ruined when pest attack their crops was considerably reduced by the services rendered by the research institute established by the government so pest attack pest attack it was reduced again okay, due to the due to the intervention of uh, laboratories research institutes there so they made in different types of uh, pesticides and that provided to the farmers uh, and the farmers utilized this uh, in uh, insecticides and pesticides uh, to protect their crops so you should not that the green revolution would
Okay, hello. Hello. Not only the big farmers, but the small farmers too. Clear or not? The various various policies that adopted by the government. Uh, basically, we can say that the subsidies, okay, and uh, the new technology used to produce the products, okay, clear or not, such kind of things basically help the farmers to increase their production, increase their uh, production. Now, take your notebook, everyone. Start writing some important uh, notes today. Okay, first of all, write down. Write down. What is a market economy? 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 Okay, already we studied a market economy, right? What kind of economy is that? It's a capitalist one, right? Right on. In a market economy, in a market economy, in bracket also known as capitalism, bracket also known as capitalism, only those goods will be produced, only those goods will be produced only those good those goods will be produced that can be sold that can be sold profitably that can be sold profitably either in the domestic or either in the domestic or in the foreign market either in the domestic or in the foreign markets okay so that's what a market economy where the products product is produced to make profit make a profit just keep that idea in your mind next one purchasing power purchasing power what do you purchasing power it refers the value of money it refers the value of money clear or not okay Today, what are the things we are able to purchase with the money that what we have and tomorrow what can we purchase or what we are able to purchase with the same amount of Okay, so that is purchasing power refers to the value of money, refers to the value of money. Okay, next one, socialist society, socialist society. What is a socialist society? One more answer. Write down. 
it is a society it is a society in which economic decisions in which economic decisions are taken by the government economic decisions are taken by the government keeping in view of keeping in view of keeping in view of collective interest of the society collective interest of the society as a whole as a whole okay collective interest of the society as a whole okay next one mixed economy mixed economy is an economic system is an economic system in which major economic decisions which major economic decisions are taken by the central government are taken by the central government as taken by the central government authority authority as well as as well as are left to are left to the true play of the market forces are left to the true play of the market forces of demand and supply market forces of demand and uh, supply basically speaking so the private individuals right okay demand and supply next one what is a plan what is a plan right on a plan spells out a plan spells out spells out how the resources of a nation should be put to use how the resources of a nation should be put to use put to use next one write a short note on planning a mission write a short note on planning a mission okay planning commission is an organization planning commission is an organization set up by the government of india planning commission is an government organization is a government organization set up by the government of india in the year 1950 in the year 1950 to make assessment of all resources to make assessment of all resources to make assessment of all resources of the country okay formulate plan formulate plans formulate plans for the most effective and balanced utilization of resources formulating plans for the most effective and balanced utilization of resources okay comma augment deficit resources augment deficit resources a u g m e n t augment deficient resources deficient resources and to determine the priorities and to determine the priorities to determine the priorities next one sankhya sankhya what is sankhya s a n k h y a what is sankhya 
Sankhya. Okay. That is a journal started by Professor P. C. Mahalanobis. A journal. A journal started by Professor. A journal started by Professor P. C. Mahalanobis. P. C. Mahalanobis. M A H A L A N O B I S. Mahalanobis. Which is highly regarded as, which is highly regarded as, sorry, which is highly regarded by, regarded by the statisticians, the statisticians, the statisticians and economists and economists. And economists all over the world to this day, all over the world to this day, all over the world to this day. Next one, what is structural composition? What is structural composition? What is structural composition? What is structural composition? It refers to the contribution. It refers to the contribution. It refers to the contribution made by each of the sector. Made by each of the sector. Made by each of the sector. That is agriculture sector. That is agricultural sector. Comma industrial sector. And service sector. And service sector. Okay. And once I ask you a question to you people, remembering that what is the fourth sector of the economy, right? Okay. Some students they find it and they send me the answer. I am appreciating them. Okay. And many of you not find that. What is that? No idea about it. Okay. So I already told you that this kind of general knowledge questions, uh, it will help you people in the future. Clear or not? Find it out, learn it, such kind of things there. Okay. So it is not related with the textbook anyway. But someone asks you, okay, you studied about the three sectors there. Then there is one more sector is there. What is that? Any idea about that? You are a 12th class student. Okay. Any ideas there? So that time we have to say, okay. What is that sector? What is the name of that sector? Anyone? Hmm? Anybody? Quaternary. Ah, quaternary sector. Oh, what are the activities included in that sector? Entertainment industries. industries. Ah, that is basically research based. Research based. Okay. Journalism, research. Okay, such kind of activities are there in that sector. Right or not? Okay. So just keep that idea in your mind. Okay. Next one, modernization. What is modernization? What is modernization? It refers, it refers not only to the adoption of new technology, not only the adoption of new technology, But also to, but also to changes in the social outlook, but also to changes in the social outlook, like women should have same rights as men. Women should have same rights as men. Women should have same rights as men. Okay, so mm, read the textbook properly. What are, what are the things we discussed today? Basically about the green revolution only. Okay, the benefits of green revolution and how it is distributed among uh, different sections of the uh, farmers. I mean the rich and the poor farmers, big and the small farmers. And what are the drawbacks of the green revolution, right or not? What are the, the problem we face there and what steps the government take uh, to avoid such kind of a uh, shortcomings or problems clear and the notes what you wrote here clear 
and we will meet in the next class everyone thank you